First off, what should be the start date for a Rome 3 Total War? Rome 2 began after the Pyrrhic Wars were over and most of Italy was under Roman rule. Rome 1 begins a couple of years later, after the fall of Etrusca. But for Rome 3, I and the voters on Discord wanted to see a different scene, and we both agreed that the start of the Pyrrhic Wars, 280 BC, would be the ideal start date. Rome was weak, challenged, fighting on two fronts. If the title was to release with scripted events that forces Pyrrhus to invade, then this early challenge would make an early Rome playthrough very enjoyable, and less of an AI stomp. I feel Rome is always CA's way of both revolutionising the series, and also showing the player how far they have come as a development team. Rome Total War was a massive leap forwards, introducing a full 3D system, both for campaign and battles, that also stood as an icon, a triumph, for how far the devs have come since Shogun 1. Rome 2 does something very similar. It was a complete overhaul of a series we knew, and again, showed us how far the team had come since Rome 1 and Medieval 2. It also stands as a point of change, stating that all games to follow will be like this. Rome 1's engine was reused in Medieval 2, and the combat system continued through Empire, Napoleon, and Shogun 2, until it got replaced by the Rome 2 system, which again is the only system of combat we have ever seen since. And so, if Rome 3 was to release today, I would expect the same themes from it. Part 1, it must show how it intends to revolutionise Total War. Part 2, it must show how far CA has come since Rome 2. And part 3, it must change up the combat. Whether you like the large armies or not, Rome always adapts it. And this adaption must last into all following titles. This is my Rome 3 Total War. How could a game like Rome 3 revolutionise the Total War series the way its predecessors did? Well, I feel it has to take place with the map. Firstly, I am not asking for a global map. The issue is, if the devs were to focus on Africa and Asia too, then that would cut off resources from Rome itself. No, Rome 2's map is brilliant as it is, but maybe extend it out a bit to include India and the Mauryan Empire. Have more of Scandinavia and Eastern Europe would be nice additions also. But apart from that, the map of Rome 2 is great and can be used for Rome 3. However, much larger. CA can now take advantage of better PCs and so can create a larger map. Rome 2 released with 168 settlements, which is almost three times its predecessor. Shogun 2 with 68. Warhammer 2 can now handle 295 settlements and still runs quite well. So this got me thinking, and that got me thinking some more. Wouldn't Rome 3 be the perfect title to launch a new engine? And with a new engine, the game can literally take any turn. This is the revolution that I have designed. Now, I feel 200 settlements would be enough. These settlements would be very similar to Rome 2's with the layout, yet filling the new areas, such as India and add a few more here and there. Yes, this combined with a new engine seems like a waste of potential, and I would agree. That's why I took the idea from Thrones of Britannia again, and think it would work perfectly here. Hear me out. Sicily will be divided into three settlements, Messana, Syracuse, Lilibayan. However, each one of those will have sub-settlements, farms, 
temple areas, ports, buildings that will not be present in the main settlement. They will be ungarrisoned, yet appear separate on the campaign map and have unique battlefields. When unified, city and sub-settlements, you have a state. First of all, imagine Hannibal rampaging through Italy, yet being unable to take Rome. Instead, he will be sacking the farms and the ports and the supply stores of the Romans, hurting them that way and drawing out a war of attrition. Imagine if armies needed to have a flow of food to replenish and stay alive, and being Caesar, cutting off his enemy's supply chains by hitting their food. Imagine the Greek city-states, each holding these small villages. It will reflect the size of large empires, yet keep it simple enough for the player, and still be able to fit in a load of Greek states. This would also work historically for the start date, as Rome did not hold that land, but rather it was under the control of vassals, or allies as they called them. Maybe you don't get 100% of the profits from it, but just a percentage as a tax, and then you can integrate it as your own later. One more thing, this did not work well in France. I believe the reason was that the army system was not ready for it. I suggest a new army system in part 3, which includes main armies and small skirmisher forces, making it easier and less time consuming to capture all these villages. But that's for part 3. This would work so well with diplomacy. Imagine a ticking war score mechanic for holding enemy territory and winning battles. What Total War does not have, that games like EU4 do brilliantly, is that you actually feel like you are sitting down at a war table, dividing up the land. This I want in Total War, where sometimes you have to push forwards and take land that you don't want or know that you're gonna have to return to the AI, but just to end the war quicker and take the territory that you do need. Or you hold on to a piece of land, half of it, and just tire the enemy down into giving you more territory. Fight a war of attrition. I think this state idea that I have would work brilliantly for this. Maybe when exchanging land for peace with AI, you can't just take a farm or a settlement, but if you want that land, then you must take the full state. This could be an interesting mechanic when fighting Rome, given their refusal to surrender, such as when fighting Pyrrhus or Hannibal. On to part 2, and I think we have touched on it already. Rome 3 must show how far CA has come since Rome 2, and diplomacy, although far from perfect, is certainly improving, as we can see in Three Kingdoms. And what we hear is going to be in Troy. It seems that the diplomacy I was talking about earlier is becoming more and more of a reality. However, there is another leap CA has made since Rome 2, which I think could work well in Rome 3. And that is with heroes. Yes, I, I did just say that. I want heroes in Rome 3. But not the heroes you expect. In the fantasy side of things, Total War heroes have been powers of strength, gods on the battlefield who can absorb hundreds if not thousands of arrows. I don't want that. I want Rome 3 heroes to be heroes of the mind. Imagine Caesar spawns. Caesar will be a hero. He will spawn with more potential maybe a few interesting traits already in place that are unique to him. He could also have a boost when it comes to rallying men on the battlefield. Hannibal could have a boost in harsh terrain, Crassus could be a good economist, for example. These are the heroes I have in mind. They must be greater and more focused at one specific thing than anyone else. They must feel special, and the player must 
looked forwards to getting them in their campaigns, yet still human. That's important. They can die like any other soldier on the battlefield, but in campaign, just through having traits, they get to shine. I really do think this could work and would show what the new CA is all about. I don't feel this makes it any less historical. However, due to the game starting in 280 BC and them probably going with a 4 turns per year system, it is unlikely that a player would go to 720 turns in for just the birth of Caesar. In fact, the furthest an average player goes, in my opinion, is about 200 turns, which is only 50 years in-game. Meaning that these heroes, Caesar, Hannibal, Scipio for example, would have to spawn at random dates and not be guaranteed to always appear. This would open up the range of possible heroes and make it more replayable, if they are random. As for the campaign, probably only being able to go 125 years max, 500 turns. Yeah, I will talk about that in a future video, as that is a general point I want to make about all titles. Look out for a video titled something like Total War and its End Turn Problem, where I will come back to this video and try and fix the turns to year conversion. On to armies. Like its predecessor, Rome 3 must again revolutionise the system, as neither have been perfect. Given my Rome 3 is designed on a new engine, this really gives the devs a lot of freedom. What I feel it needs is the big armies as we can see in the newer titles. These armies will be able to recruit the best units available and will be able to hold 20 units in the stack, like in the new titles. However, for a cheaper cost, the player and AI should be able to recruit skirmisher armies. These skirmisher armies will be weaker and unable to stand against a main army. Their job will be to do the smaller missions, the scouting, maybe sacrificed to slow the enemy down, hold supply lines but can still reinforce the big army when a major battle begins. These armies could be capped at 5 units max and have no real general. This I believe will fix it and be a great middle ground. Just imagine Caesar and Pompey, both with their large main armies, chasing each other in Greece, yet they also have a few small skirmisher squads disrupting each other's supplies, trying to gain the upper hand for either side, until eventually the two armies meet, bring all the skirmishers as well, and battle begins. Quick side note, don't cut sea battles. Lastly, before we uh, discuss possible DLC, the Civil War. This many people wanted changing, many saying it was too confusing or not fun at all. And this is where I really think all my features come to shine. First of all, it's annoying when the Civil War happens and your empire breaks into two. And all of your work you have done, you have to do it yet again. It is annoying and would force many players like myself to just quit. I cannot be bothered conquering the land I just took. It's not fun, yet time consuming. Okay, so how about a system exactly like Rome 2, where your empire does split at a civil war, but, and it's a very big but, you don't have to reconquer it. What if you can reclaim the land simply by killing their leader in battle, and then it all converts to you? But if your leader dies, then they get your land. This will really speed up the civil war and prevent it from being tedious and annoying. It's also mostly historical as well, which is another plus. 
and it puts a lot of emphasis on maybe just one or two massive, super massive epic battles, Romans versus Romans, to completely decide the fate of your campaign. Maintaining the Republic should be about keeping the other parties balanced. This could actually work well with the settlement system. Maybe you could give away farmland or a port to other political factions to keep them happy. Yet they will own the land and only pay a tax of it back to you. But if one gets too powerful, then they will rise up eventually. I don't want to go into too much detail, but something fun and simple is important. Also, it should be possible to hold the Republic together for the whole game. And if civil war should ignite, it must be clear that all you have to do is win a few battles maximum to inherit it back. Nothing too tedious or annoying. And that is everything there. This series is about myself and the community putting down ideas for a possible Total War game, and who knows, maybe CA will see it. But we're not here to hate on other people's opinions, or to place demands on CA. It's just for fun, and many people have different ideas of course. I believe all factions playable should be free. And DLC should focus on campaigns at different start dates, yet with a full map, not your basic Caesar and Gaul stuff. If it's Caesar, I want the full Caesar experience. Caesar and Gaul and then going down to the Civil War. You may think this is a bit unlikely. However, it seems to be the direction they are heading in lately, as we can see by the DLC policy for Three Kingdoms. No factions to pay for. No mechanics hidden behind a paywall, just different start dates and unique features in those start dates. In conclusion, Rome 3 must revolutionise the series, like Rome 1 and 2 did. And I believe this would be a revolution that we need and want. Rome 3 must also be a landmark for the next future titles to follow for at least the next 10 years, until the release of Rome 4, which again would do the same. I also feel that a new engine 100% is needed for Rome 3. I am not the type to say new engine is needed for every game, but Rome 3 and the changes it must make, a new engine would be a necessity. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe to get notified of next week's where we will look into the remasters of Rome 1 and Medieval 2. Something a little different. Also, there's a video coming up which will look into the turn to year conversion and how all future titles could try and fix that. Share with anyone you think may be interested, it really helps me out. I have a Rome 2 roleplay campaign series starting this Friday, 29th at 7pm BST. It's a mega campaign going through Rome 2, the DLC, to Attila and then 1212 AD, following a historical route, custom speeches and the community gets to be a part of the Senate and vote. But until then, goodbye.